I often record things uh, for posterity, all right? And uh, that's because I don't know if I'm ever gonna use this or whatever, but um, you know, if something happens to me or whatever, then this message will go on, you know? We are a skilled trade, and people hear me talk about this all the time, and uh, with any skilled trade, it only survives with the passing of knowledge from one person to the next through mentor, mentee, and from the day you enter training in your, your career field is the day you make a lifelong commitment. It's a lifelong commitment to share whatever somebody gave you for knowledge, you're gonna share that with the people that follow in your footsteps. It's a lifelong commitment. There's people that are here at this event who retired years ago, and they're still here, right? Why? It's not just a sense of community, it's because they understand that commitment. It's, it's organic, they understand it. I do open source speeches which means this speech might only be 15 minutes long. I have no clue, I don't even know what I'm gonna say yet, all right? <laughs> but every time I give these speeches, they grow because after the speech, people give me insight, they give me uh, key concepts that I didn't even know existed, and I grow with my speeches. So I've, I've got one speech, that it's easily an hour and a half long if I were to give it in its entirety. However, it's got all sorts of knowledge fragments that go from everywhere, but this, this is something I've noticed for years, is that people and companies, they do not market themselves correctly, and it's extremely annoying to me because I, all I see is potential. I see, I see potential everywhere. And yeah, you can make money with potential. That's, that's part of it. But the other thing is we could be better. We could always be better, man. But this is actually my story. So. That's why I wrote the speech, Unlocking Your Potential, The Power of Self-Marketing and Creating Self-Worth. Self-marketing could also mean your company. It's not just a person, it's a technician. You know, technicians sell themselves from the moment you go in the door. They'll tell you to, to turn around and walk out if you don't sell yourself correctly. I've had people that the doctors told, get out. They didn't even say one word. They told them, get out. No, you, leave. Why'd that happen? Because first impression's everything, right? So. Unlocking your potential. Who am I, right? This is gonna be absolutely vital to the story. You have to understand where I came from uh, in order for you to buy into who I am and my message and why this message is very effective. I was a military biomed, nine and a half years, right? I had an extremely good career. I was gonna do 20, 25 years. I was full in it. And um, I had a lot of excellent mentors. They made sure that I was put in the right position to go where I needed to go. And uh, that all changed one day, right? Things happen. Um, I had a double spontaneous pneumothorax, which is when your lung collapses, it pops a hole. And when that happens in the military, it happens twice, that's the end of your career. What do you do next? Well, I would like to have a happy story and say that biomed is the perfect career for the military because you transition to the civilian world perfectly. That's what I thought. That's what everybody made me believe. However, I struggled for six months applying at places. I put in probably 200 applications at hospitals, at companies, all over the place. I got this message today when I was sitting there. I didn't eat lunch today because I was updating these slides. This was a reflection on my struggles, all right? This happened 12 years ago on this day. I got this, this uh, post I made on Facebook. It said, I just received an acceptance letter from the HR department in uh, Duke University. I said, Jenny of us uh, have always wanted this. Please pray for us. That means in May, 12 years ago, I still, that was six, seven months, I still didn't have a home. Charleston was my home. So what happened is, Herbie West, who was the guy that used to run Roper Hospital, I applied for a position at Roper, and two or three hours later, he called me and said, hey, Justin, we'd like you to come on out to Charleston. We'd like to interview you for this position. Two days later, I was standing in front of his desk. I, as soon as I got off the phone, I got my plane tickets, and Jenny and I, we flew here to Charleston, and Charleston is the city that gave my first opportunity when I got out of the military. My family was falling apart. 
I thought this career was taking me absolutely nowhere because I applied at hundreds of places and I didn't get a single job opportunity. And this is just a reminder. I wouldn't be standing here today. I've spent thousands of my own dollars to be here today to show respect to Charleston for what they did for me. And I completely forgot about this. How crazy is that? That, I, I, that was reminded to me while I'm sitting at a table for this event. So I am extremely thankful to everybody in South Carolina for what they've done for me because none of this would have happened if it wasn't for, for Charleston. So this photo right here was taken at Medical University of South Carolina. I started doing YouTube to train people because I, I noticed that there's a discrepancy between how the civilians and how the military train people. And if you can tell, this is up in the OR, some of you all that work at uh, Medical University. I just took a monitor, literally it's balancing on a table, and I wanted to teach people about isolated power because I just got in an argument with the electrical engineer for the hospital because he thought we had a switched, uh, a switched system. And I told him, no, we have a transformer that's connected straight up to our limb panel, and that's how it is. So I drew up this diagram. Since I drew this up and emailed it to him, I was like, you know something, I'm going to teach everybody else about that because I bet you if, if he didn't know about it, then a lot of other people didn't know about it. So I drew this up, and I did my first video. That was five and a half years ago. And since then, it has just absolutely exploded. This month particularly, like you can see, it's just gone nuts. It has taken me places I'd never imagined. I've, I've flown around the country, spoke in front of hundreds of people at uh, company corporate events. I've toured companies behind the scenes, places with proprietary knowledge that nobody's allowed to see. They took me in those rooms to show me because I have that desire to understand why things happen. And I want everybody to do better. So that's who I am. And that's going to be quintessential to this speech because you have to understand who I am in order to buy into me. So uh, who in this room is in sales? All right. All of us. Every single person in this room is in sales. You don't realize it, but the reason maybe if you are already biomed, maybe you haven't gone as far as you like is because you haven't realized that. You're in sales. You're selling yourself from the moment you walk in. Every single interpersonal communication that you have here is you selling yourself. There's doors opening and closing for each and every one of you every single day. You don't even realize it. Every single person that you talk to, there's people in there that can make you a hell of a lot of money in that room. It's up to you. All right? And it's not just about money. Maybe they give you a career opportunity that you never thought you'd have a chance at. They're in that room, right? So everybody here is in sales, you're always selling yourself, which is why it's absolutely important to always give the best impression every single time. Once you learn this, this will be the only thing. We could end the speech right here. People buy into what they relate to. It's my number one rule in life. That's it. That's the end. That's it. I'm dead serious. Once you, but the, the gravity of that, it's just, just a couple words. If you were to master the simple sentence, Every single thing that you do for the rest of your life is going to be easier. It's going to be more prosperous. Because the thing is, other people are there. They're going to open doors for you. They're going to help you out. They're going to buy your product. They're going to buy your service. They're going to hire you as a technician. But they have to buy into you. How do you do that? We're humans, right? Humans buy into humans when you humanize yourself. <laughs> I mean, you have to make those conversations. You have to talk to people. You have to be good at shaking hands. You have to be able to communicate with people. So what do we buy into? You're going to see this throughout your entire life, like all sorts of stuff. We buy into products, right? Let's say Coca-Cola. How do you buy into Coca-Cola? They'll have just a picture of a bottle on a billboard. No words, just a bottle. But you recognize the bottle because of the shape, right? It's Coke. We all know Coke. How do they do that? Well, they got you to buy into it. They, they fooled you. We buy into companies. Why is your company better than yours? How do we make that discrepancy? Well, there, there are ways. We'll get into that. Services. We have to buy into services. Why do I want your contract versus yours? Politics. Obviously, we're not going to get into politics here, guys, but nonetheless, like, why is it that a lot of politics fail? It's because people don't buy into it. Why don't they buy into it? Because they didn't see your side of the story. That's why they don't buy into it. Locations. Why Charleston? There's ads all over. When I moved to Charleston, they're like, it's the best place in the country to live. And look at the place now. 
I mean, geez, because people bought into it, right? There's all that media hype about, hey, Charleston's a beautiful place, right? Look where you guys are now. Goals. People buy into your goals. Personal goals, your company goals, your growth. If you make your goals clear and you stay true to yourself, people will buy into your goals and they'll help you get there. Religion. The whole definition of religion is getting people to buy into it. That's what it is, right? It's about sharing it and, and expanding your religion and your culture. How do I know your culture versus mine? Well, if I experience some of your culture, then I'll buy into it. Now, I, maybe I want to be part or maybe I want to embrace your culture. But you have to experience it. You have to humanize it. So how do people buy into you? How do people buy into you? There's four little steps. I'm down here. Number one, excellent communication skills. If you don't have that first one, then all the rest of them don't even matter. None of them, because you won't get them. You have to be able to communicate. So let's say, let's take a, a little scenario. Two technicians. One of them is a junior technician straight out of school. What are the odds? I thought of that before I even met that person today, okay? Straight out of school, excellent communicator. They present them so well versus a 15-year, 20-year technician, not so good at communicating, but they know their equipment. They know how to fix things, right? Let's say that junior technician, they get that work order, they call the contact on the work order, and they say, help, I'll be there in a couple minutes. I'll go down there, check it out. They don't really know what's going on, but they have the communication skills to tell the people before they leave, hey, I'm not really sure. I'm going to go do my research. Is it okay if I get back with you? I'll call you back in just a couple hours. Versus the senior tech, he goes and he fixes it, does the best repair in the world, but he doesn't tell anybody before he leaves. It happens, we've all seen it. Who do you think the doctor is gonna to want to come back? Even though it's repaired, they don't know it's repaired. They don't know what he did to it. Is it safe, is it gonna happen again? They don't know, because that person didn't communicate what they did, and because of that, there is no proof of competency. So once you can communicate yourself, then you can demonstrate your competency. Once you demonstrate your competency, you establish trust. We are a business of trust. And once you have trust, now you leave a positive impression. So that's your four, four steps. And you would think they're simple. But if you don't have communication skills, then you will never get the rest. So here's the thing about communication skills. There's certain talents in life that you'll never have. Either you'll never have those talents in your life because you don't have that, those physical attributes. Maybe you're not an athlete. Maybe you're not musically inclined. Maybe you're deaf. It's pretty hard to learn to play the guitar if you're deaf, right? Um, but communication skills is something that every single human being has the ability to improve. We all can communicate. You can be a quadriplegic with something in your mouth that's typing something out and you can still communicate. And you can always improve on that skill. So that is the one thing that every single person can do to, to be better. You can always be a better communicator than what you are today. And I am living proof of that. I was a horrible communicator. Horrible. All right? So I get nervous when I'm in front of people. I used to get sick when I was in front of people. I was never able to hold conversations with people I didn't know. Um, shaking hands, walking into a room, and just talking to people around the room. Never was able to do that. So I started doing... YouTube videos. The interesting thing about YouTube videos is you can see yourself and you can critique yourself. And that's what you do, just naturally. So over time of talking to yourself in a camera, you're going to realize your imperfections in your delivery and how you stand, how you make eye contact. You're going to understand all that about you by watching yourself. And there's this one YouTuber, he does a 30-day challenge. And it's a fascinating video. I wanted to post it on LinkedIn, but I forgot the link. And what he does is he challenges people to record themselves for 30 days. Every single day, there's a new part of the challenge. Now, I don't really know what it is. It's a five-minute video today on anything you want. Tomorrow, it might be, uh, no, we're going to write a brief outline, and you're going to give uh, on a certain topic a five-minute video on that. Five-minute videos every single day, right? You would be surprised how easy it is to make a 10-minute long video. At the end of 30 days, they do a compilation video of the, of the journey. It's amazing. 30 days, and these guys, at the very end, they're making organic videos. They're talking to a camera like 
they've been doing it their entire lives. It's insane. I have my original video still posted. That video that I, I showed you, that screenshot, it's still up there. And I've had people, they, they said, why don't you redo some of those videos? Why don't, why don't you, because I could do them better today. Because they show the growth. That's why I'm adamant about it, because it was part of my journey. I mean, yeah, I might have got some context wrong. Um, I could have done it better. I could have done you know, slides instead of like uh, just a monitor behind me talking. However, it was part of the journey. You could see my vocal pauses. You could see that I was uncomfortable in front of the camera. You could see all that. It was part of the journey. But because of that, I developed much better communication skills. Now I can walk into a room, I can shake hands, and I can meet people. I'm a better technician today because I'm a better communicator. And now that I can show people that I know what I'm talking about, even though I usually don't, I, I, I can demonstrate competency, thus people trust me, I don't know why, and I leave a positive impression. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so, it's, it, I mean, that's is all it is. That's those four components. You figure those out, you got it. Communication skills number one. That includes your emails. Something as simple as an email, checking your spelling. You know the words there. The word, I swear to God, I'll throw this cup of water. I, I get, I've had too much Red Bull for that. I swear to God. The word's there. It's such an easy grammatical error to remedy. Don't you know it? Yours. Oh my gosh. Don't get me started on yours. <laughs> All right. Even with spell check, I'm seeing that in professional uh, uh, newspapers, online newspapers. Even. Yes. a grammatical error where the spell check didn't pick it up, but if someone had just reread what yeah. they wrote or had someone else read it, they, they would have picked that up. You're absolutely correct. It, it uh, diminishes the <clears throat> competency aspect of what you're talking about. You don't rely on AI and things like grammar, which are great. You're absolutely things, correct. But you still need to have the knowledge. Yes. There's, you have to have the fundamentals. Once you figure out the fundamentals, the rest is easy. Do you know how many emails I immediately discredit somebody? They'll never get my trust because if they can't even write an email correctly, like I'll get an email like that says FYI, and then it'll be attachments of other emails. Give me a brief summary. What are you doing? It, it drives me absolutely crazy. And these are college graduates. They're running companies, and they can't even communicate an email. It's, why would I give you a contract? No one likes to scroll through 15 And I've done it. And, and I, I've almost done videos because I get so upset about it. But think about it. Did I buy into them? No. I, not if I, if I have the option between two, and that's, my, that's the level of competency of, of somebody, then I'll never buy into them. And every single day, that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to get people to buy into us. So what's your value? This is going to be an interesting one, because every single person in this room has a different value. Now, you have a value in your head of what every single minute of your time is worth. When I'm sitting there on a Saturday and I'm watching cartoons with the kids and stuff, I have a lot of stuff that I do like behind the scenes. I attribute that time that I'm spending with them to a certain dollar amount. Like, it's worth it to me, right? But I'm, st I'm still thinking. I don't just sit there and goof off ever in my life and not think, like, oh, this, this is a waste of time. Because that waste of time, you're never going to get back. And that's lost opportunities, lost money that you'll never get back. Somebody else out there is hungrier than you. And they're going to get it, and you're not, because you're complacent, and they got the hustle, right? So every single minute of your time equals money. What is it? It's up to you. Now, do you guys think that you're currently being paid at your value? Does anybody in this room think that you're being paid at your value? I hope not. And, and the reason being is because if you're paid at your value, you're not doing enough. Your value should always be more than what you're paid. That way there, there's always an opportunity for growth and for raises. And plus, companies are there to make money. Let's just get to the brass tacks of it. They're there to make money. And if you are being paid what your worth is, I can hire anybody to do what you do. I mean, you're, the, people hire you because of your value. And if you're currently working at your value, you try and establish value. Why would I invest training into you to make you a better technician if you're just barely cutting it? If, I, if you're a hustler and I see you like you're, you're able to be trained, and this dude here is very competent and everything I've given him thus far, I'm going to invest more into him. Now his value goes up. I bought into him, right? And the way that... Yes, that you always have to be working at a higher value than what you're being paid. That's just the nature of it, and, that, and that's...
capitalism in a nutshell. That brings me to this. I seen a YouTube video about the world's most expensive water and I, I just lost my gourd. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's the actual price of that bottle of water. Yeah, it's 50% more. <laughs> However, it's water. Yeah, it comes from an iceberg in Canada. I grew up in Michigan. Shit, we had all sorts of water. <laughs> right? I never, I, I guess I wasn't a genius enough to go to the Great Lakes and put a, a couple of bottles down and sell it. But that's $209. This one here, you can go to your local Costco and get for 25 cents. Why? Why can they do that? There's, if there's videos of people buying that, that expensive bottle of water on YouTube, that means people are buying it at least for the novelty. That's genius. Why did they do that? It's about the brand. You, as a technician, as a company, everything about you is about the brand. The whole purpose of a brand is to get people to pay more than they would for a comparable product. That's why you have a brand. And that is water. That, oddly enough, is still water. <laughs> so the price discrepancy, it's. 2,000% higher. Why? The brand. It's because somebody marketed themselves correctly, even as a novelty. You can market yourself as a novelty. That's probably not a good idea in our business, but if you, if you market a novelty, you can sell it for more. More parts to you. I actually admire that. I never thought of that. So that leads me to self-marketing. It's all about the marketing. It's about personal marketing. It's about company marketing. It's how you do it. There's two different types of marketing. <laughs> I love Muppets. There's micro scale and there's macro scale marketing. Micro scale is walking up to people, shaking hands. You can do that on the street. You can do that in your community, at your church, whatever. Micro scale marketing is happening everywhere. The thing is you want people to buy into you. How do they do that? They have to relate to you. I had a conversation with a gentleman here this morning. How odd is that? He just graduated, he came up and shook my hand and we had a conversation. I bought into him because now I relate to him. He had a, a button up shirt on and he presented himself fantastically well. He gave me a brief synopsis of his story and I immediately pulled out my phone and I made a social media post for him and now he's got probably multiple job offers, a couple of which they, they already wrote me about. Why'd that happen? It's because he marketed himself correctly he came to somebody who was willing to help him, which there's many people in this room that are gonna help other people. A lot of people do that every single day. He came up and he shook my hand on a small scale. Now what I wish he would have done better is to bring a resume with him because when you go to these events and you're looking for a new opportunity, you should always have a printed current copy of your resume. But everybody begins somewhere, right? Macro scale is large scale. You know, that's social media, that's getting out there, that's your business and stuff, trying to get it on a global scale. It's possible. It's much more expensive to do. Micro scale. This is the perfect event. We're here. Uh, or, or that's in Texas. That's coming up. <laughs> but I mean, the whole purpose of us being here is to network and to market yourselves. And, you know, shaking hands and stuff, that's opening doors that you never even knew were open. All right? You go up and you're talking to people, you're talking to leaders in medical, you're talking to company owners. I mean, for all you know, that's going to be your employer down there, or maybe your competition. Who knows? You never know, but it starts here and it takes ambition and it takes motivation. Micro scale starts with your resume. It's your sales sheet for who you are, all right? Everything on that resume is a sales sheet. It's like an advertisement. So why, why do people mess up? I mean, there's so many resumes. I've had hundreds of resumes. I hire people. I'm currently vice president of OU Medical. I hire a bunch of people. I see resumes that have all the same faults and it's so annoying. And I've always tried to be one step ahead because I try to market myself better than everybody else. Now, I've already told you that people buy into what they relate to. How do you relate to a resume? Well, the first step is right here. You have an intro paragraph, right? That's good if you're writing it. A lot of people mess up in the intro paragraph. They say, uh, I had this, this one girl, she sent me a resume. Believe it or not, she just graduated like six months before. And right here in the thing, it's, it's the generic fluff. It says experienced technician, yada, yada, yada. You, you've all seen it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Experienced technician, good at troubleshooting, complex circuits and whatnot. That's fluff. Those are immeasurable words. They tell me nothing about you. I don't buy into you because you and I do not relate. 21-year biomed with 9.5 years of active military service. Easily half of our career field are veterans, right? I'm immediately marketing 
to that half of the population just off the bat, right? 21 year biomed says I'm experienced, right? I specialize in surgical equipment, medical networking, audio video systems, and advanced troubleshooting. That's just my first sentence. I'm a senior technician position with a possible future in medical imaging. So I'm telling them my aspirations, right? Because that's the other thing that is always this weird handshake deal when you meet somebody. You're trying to figure out where does this person want to go in their future, right? It's really weird and it's awkward. It's awkward for the hiring manager. It's awkward for the other person. I'm going to tell you. That's what I want to do, right? Because now, if you don't want to hire me, that's fine. It's not the best match for both of us anyway. My strengths are team building and process improvement, along with public speaking and medical technology instruction. And then I close it with thank you very much for your time and consideration. I'm going to make you relate to me on that on multiple levels, either because I'm experienced and you're looking for experience, because I have the skills that you're looking for, because I can communicate well, or because I'm a veteran. One of those, hopefully, is going to get me an op opportunity. If I did something else on this resume, I did a video on, and it's really funny that nobody else really thought of this first. I put a QR code up here in the corner. That QR code goes to a 30 second long video where I just make it a simple introduction. And all it is is, hello, I'm Justin Barber. I'm a 21 year biomed. I've worked in surgical almost my entire career. I love getting out and meeting people. I love solving problems. I interface well with medical staff and I'd really like to come and work for your company. 30 seconds. You can tell who I am, my demeanor, what I look like. I'm not just a sheet of paper, I'm, I'm a human. It started with a QR code in the corner. It's kind of weird, it's free, you can do it. It's easy. I wish more people did that because I'd really like to know how somebody communicates what they look like. If I'm shaking hands and I got like multiple candidates in a room, I, it's really difficult to figure out who's who, right? I, we try to do research, we go on LinkedIn and stuff, and we try to figure out who somebody is before they get there. Just is what it is. So your resume, it's your sales sheet. It's an advertisement for you. Macro scale marketing. This is big time and little time. LinkedIn is your secret weapon, guys. It is a secret weapon. I know I've been a champion for it for a while, but LinkedIn is a golden goose. It lays you golden eggs. It's just how much do you want to put into it? There's active marketing. Some people do it fantastically. Now this one here, Amory, I don't completely remember. No, no offense, Amory, if you ever see this video. Uh, I think I've met him before, not really sure. I've talked with him on the phone before, and, I, and me and him, we've messaged before. Why, social media, it's fantastic. But I know what he does. I know of him. I've offered him multi-thousand dollar contracts before because because I know that he specializes in medical lasers. He's an authority. He does posts where he gives you like FYI type things, you know? So since he does FYIs, it's like, holy cow, this guy's a subject matter expert. He might have only started two years ago, I don't know. But he releases content that makes me think he knows what he's talking about. So when I got somebody that says, hey, I got 21 lasers, I reach out to him and I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna get you an inventory list of these lasers. You get me some quotes, all right? Let's do some business. I've never met the guy before as far as I'm aware, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know, but his posts advertise for him. And the reason it's active is because it's targeted. It's saying, I'm selling something, and if you're buying, I'm the guy. That's what it says. So for inquiries, customer service, you can see right here, PM kill switch. This is actually a really good post. He took photos of things in the field, and he says in photos what, what he does. Now. The reason he does social media posts is why I've offered him actual business before. It's because I bought into him. He it, communicates well and he's apparently a subject matter expert. Think about it. Passive marketing. I contacted Mark Taylor last night. He's a uh, president of MME, Master, Master Medical Equipment and Renew Biomedical. Awesome dude. Um, they are active in their community and in politics they're active all over the place. They are champions of training biomeds to be better. They've supported me even when I went to Capitol Hill, when I went to go and talk to Congress uh, for Right to Repair. They've, they, they're awesome people. But what they do really well is passive marketing. This right here, he's not selling anything. Think about it. Passive marketing is when you're not 
saying, I'm selling this. The perfect marketing strategy is when you mix both. And that includes you as a technician. And it's not just companies, it's also technicians. Like to say, hey, FYI, you know, this stuff broke, like this is how I fix it. That tells me this guy knows what he's doing. Do you know how many times I've had companies try and, and steal me from my current company or from hospitals and stuff because I presented myself well? Like uh, when, when they come in to visit, to, for maybe for contracts for biomed buyouts or something, they'll come up, I've had them take me out to lunch and, and stuff before because passively I just gave that positive impression and they kind of wanted me on their team. That's a really good experience, but it's passive marketing. Just presenting yourself well and appearing like you have everything figured out, which none of us do, but hey, we appear that way. But these guys are just champions of it. Other passive marketing strategies, they take social media posts of their people when they earn accomplishments. So let's say somebody gets a, uh, well, I just seen these guys did one for a guy that earned a CHTM, Certified Healthcare Technology Manager. One of their guys just earned that, and they were standing there with a photo congratulating him. What does it mean? They support training, that their guys are competent, that, I mean, that's the passive strategy is like, hey, congratulate, they're putting this guy in a spotlight that earned an achievement, that's passive. I'm not saying we're selling something, but it's making me buy into them because now I relate to them because I, I'm experiencing that with them. They're showing their culture, they're showing who they are and what they represent. That makes me buy into them. Awesome people. I, if it wasn't for social media, I never would have bought into them. I've, I've gone and visited their place, toured their, toured their place, spontaneously, by the way. I just call them up, I'm like, hey, I'm headed over. But uh, cool people, man, and, and they're doing social media right. I bought into them, and their company is blowing up because other people are buying into them too. Macro scale marketing, you can write articles and blogs, all right? It takes one single post to put yourself out there as a subject matter expert. Let's say this projector caught fire. I figured out what it was, and I just did a photo of it and said, for your information, guys, this just happened. And I'm just saying, maybe you want to check your fleet because this is what, what we found caused it. It's completely preventable. Check your fleet. I now make it sound like I know what I'm doing. Now you guys are more in the know about your own equipment. And the fact of the matter is, is I, I honestly believe that makes the healthcare industry better just in general because now we're sharing knowledge. But... Now other people are probably gonna write me, which they have, and ask me questions about something I really knew nothing about. And they make it sound like I'm a subject matter expert, and I know the limited, but it was because one little post that made me a subject matter expert, apparently. But it takes the motivation to write that one article, take that one photo, make that one post. And the reason that is macro scale marketing is because you never know how far that post is gonna go. There are executives of companies that have seen some of my posts that I was not expecting, for better or worse. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, you, micro scale marketing, you know your audience. This is micro scale marketing, okay? I know who you are. Macro scale is if I'm on the intercom and it's going throughout this entire building, right? I don't know who's receiving it. It's out there. Once it's out there, there's no pulling it back, right? That's macro scale, okay? So this is an interesting post. And this one is, is fascinating because Samuel Oliver, he is not even graduated yet. He's just a student, he works out at ZRG. I wish I would've met him. Hey, I'm calling you out, man. Samuel Oliver, I stopped at ZRG to come and visit you. I personally drove two hours to go and visit this dude and he wasn't working there that day. Why? The reason being is because he showed his passion for infusion pumps. We hate infusion pumps. Experienced biomeds do not want to touch them. And, and that's what I wrote up here, is that he has passion, and that's something that we often forget. That went through 11,000 people, over 11,000 people. He didn't have very much, you know, to say about himself, but now 11,000 people know that this dude is passionate about this industry. See? So if people buy into you, they'll share your posts. If they share your posts, who knows where it's gonna go? It could end up, for all I know, he's got other jobs that have been offered to him because of this. I know I would. If you find somebody that's that hungry, snatch them up. <sighs> Macro scale networking. Somebody told me this phrase once and it has 
lived with me for the last 10 years. Your network is your net worth. If you think about it, if you use your network correctly, you're going to have way more opportunities than everybody else. The bigger your network, the more opportunities. Simple math, right? That means if you're selling a product, if you're selling yourself, if you're just trying to look for new opportunities, the more people in your network, the more people that buy into you as a technician, the more opportunities that are always going to be there for the rest of your life. So that takes me to LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. <laughs> so before I go to an event, let's say South Carolina, although I know a lot of people in South Carolina, let's say New England. I'm going to New England in two weeks. Before I get to an event, two months out, I start finding people, like keywords, like up here, you can see I search for a biomedical equipment technician, and then uh, actually uh, Connecticut, United States, there you go. Uh, oddly enough, uh, I took this screenshot when I was looking for people in Connecticut. So what I'm doing is I'm finding people that I currently do not have in my network, and, I, and I'm sending simple little messages to them, and I'm, I'm sending a connection request. I target an area a month to two months before an event happens. So when I show up, people know who I am, and unfortunately, I don't know who they are. That's a good scenario, because I can communicate. People come up to me and say, hey, Justin, I'll come up and we'll, we'll, we'll talk, and I'll share a story. And now we buy into each other, right? Now that conversation happens. Those conversations wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have took that initiative. So. If you send a message, you're twice as likely to get a response. And believe it or not, the odd thing is, the higher somebody up is in a company, the more likely they're going to write you back. Like junior level, nothing. But if you contact a CEO of a company or something, believe it or not, those guys write back and they're like, hey, Justin, uh, really happy to have you in my network, yada, yada, yada. And they're much more likely to write back than somebody that's junior. You would think it's the inverse because they're busy, right? It's because they understand the power of networking. They understand that everybody has value, otherwise they wouldn't be running the company. People don't last long running the company if you don't understand the value of people. So every single week, it used to be Monday at 7 a.m., they open the floodgates for, for LinkedIn. You have 100 connection requests that you're allowed to make every single week, and it begins at 7 a.m. Central Time on LinkedIn. So I, you betcha, as soon as I get to work on Monday, I've, I've, I have like a concept of where I want to target and keywords I want to target, and then I start hitting them up and, and introducing myself and connecting to people in mass before it ever happens until this magical little message pops up. So here's the, here's the thing, guys. When you go to an event like this and you start talking to people, the, one of the things uh, many of you have probably already experienced, because I've had these conversations with many of the people in this room, I ask you, are you on LinkedIn? Are you on my LinkedIn? It, now it's, it's almost like a crapshoot because I've got a lot of people in my network. But if you're just getting started, you ask the, the question, are you on LinkedIn? And then you immediately add them to your network. Why? Because people buy into what they relate to. If they see your post, even casual posts, like, hey, I'm at the airport, I'm going here, whatever, they relate to you. It's a human reaction. We just relate to people that, that we see things of their, their posts. We want to be part of their lives inadvertently. You have 100, and, and when you get the premium, it, it's like $69 a month. It sounds expensive, I swear to God. It's really not in the grand scheme of things. It's definitely, if you're looking for a job, if you're looking for uh, new clients, it is completely worth it. Now, uh, I can tell you that if you're looking for a job, you should be adding every single person you talk to at these events to your LinkedIn, on the spot. I whip out my phone, people have seen me, and I'll be like, hey, is this you? And I'll add them on the spot, or yeah, I am in your network. All right, well, let me know if you need any jobs or anything. I'm here to help you out. You know, we have those conversations in real time. Don't let them walk away. And if you get business cards, go back to your hotel room or something that night and start adding them to LinkedIn. Hey, we had a good conversation today. I just want to add you to my network. Keywords, that, that, because they'll buy into you if you say, hey, we had a good conversation today. Oh, you're that dude. That's right. I mean, come on, we're talking to like 100, 200 people every day, right? So that way there, they, they buy into you because they relate to you. Oh, yeah, I, I did talk to you. Make sure you get to this message, especially if you're trying to grow. 
Facebook. I know I'm dating myself by even using that as an example. However, there are Facebook groups out there, all right? And uh, there's multiple things going on in this slide. Um, because I host my own micro-scale biomed meetups. These are unofficial. These aren't HTMA things or whatnot. I have people on my phone, um, the, a whole string of people on a text. So when I meet biomeds at a bunch of Houston hospitals, um, we started at the same hospital, most of us, and then we kind of moved, because biomeds move about every two years. But that's good, because now my network just expanded to all these regional hospitals. So when I say, like, hey, dudes, let's, let's all meet up someplace, we'll meet up at a pub or something. This isn't even everybody. There are a bunch of people out there on the patio. And we're just chilling. We're having some beers. We're having a good old time. We're networking. We're talking about job opportunities. We're, hey, you got some broken stuff? Hey, I know a dude. I'll whip up my phone on the spot and be like, hey, man, I got somebody that's looking to sell a CT. You looking to buy? We'll do it on the spot, live, in real time. Um, and oddly enough, you can see uh, my post from this, but that's a biomed group, and there's a bunch of them. They're local, often. So it'll be like Houston, it'll be Raleigh, whatever. There's biomed groups on there, and they'll do casual meetups. I host a lot of those, as many as possible. I know, guys, I need to do it again. But uh, that's just a perfect example. Other ways of macro scale marketing. Video. Holy cow. The power of video. Most people will never understand what you can accomplish with video. You can train people quicker in video. You can make people, I already told you the four criteria to make people buy into you. Video has it all. It, you can determine somebody's ability to communicate on a video. You can determine their competency on a video. If they're uncertain of what they're doing or something, you pick up those little visual cues. But if they're a master of what they do, you see it on the video. And you're going to trust them automatically, and you're going to buy into them. And video always leaves people with a positive experience. Why? Because you can edit video. Yeah? And you can do small videos on little things. I, I can whip out a video right now and, and talk, talk to people about how to do uh, speeches with pictures of Muppets. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's the craziest thing. Video is absolute power for everybody. You can do little snippets, even a little video snippet like, hey, I'm over here at the hospital. We're going to meet these guys. Fascinating group of people over here at Yada Yada Hospital. And, uh, you know, I haven't been here in a while, but I'm here to stay high. Guys, I'm bringing you some donuts. Let's do this. And bam. You have a 30 second long video, people relate to you, you're like, man, this dude's awesome. I want him to show up in my shop. That little video just got me in the door faster than almost any of you guys because people are gonna buy into it. They're like, hey, yeah, all right, this, guy, this dude's pretty cool. Video is magical and it's free. It's absolutely free. I, I record most of my videos on my phone, as you can see right there. It doesn't take no expensive camera, it takes a phone, snaps some photos. It's super easy. And then remember, if you're doing video, try and keep it smaller. Less is better, you know? I know a lot of mine are like really long, but that's because I got a lot to say, I think. <laughs> but three to five minute long, 30 second long video, you do YouTube shorts or something, huge power there, okay? People buy into you because they witness you. They know your face before you even show up. And that is the kind of luxury that sales has never had before. Sales. They're struggling to get people to uh, understand who they are, what they represent, before they get there. You know, you're doing the cold calls and stuff. Guess what? You don't have to do that with video. The calls will come to you. And it's true. It happens all the time. Like somebody just reached out to me a couple days ago about a couple MRIs that they're looking to sell. Me? I don't, I don't, I don't do MRIs, but hell, let's, let's do it. Let's sell them. You know? <laughs> but video is crazy. And, and the crazy thing is, if you're a biomed technician, how do you express that you're a subject matter expert? Little training videos, little FYIs. If you're a traveling technician outside the hospital being like, hey, we're in Georgia, yeah, let's go do this. You always want to leave them with a positive experience and the fact that you're motivated, that you're excited to go and experience new things. Video, it's, it's really powerful. Okay, guys, so that kind of brings us to the end of it. Your career is a journey, whether or not you own a company, whatever. Your only limiting factor is you. The technology's there, and it's free. It's there. Every single one of us can start doing it right now. And I'll tell you right now, a lot of people won't. That's OK. Every single tool that you'll ever need to be extremely successful, you already own. It's just whether or not you take it up, whether or not you realize there's possibilities. But through your network and through other people, you can figure out what you're doing wrong. 
And if there's any way that you can improve on yourself, you can figure that out through networking. It's magical. We're all here to help you. But it's up to you. It's your journey. So, guys, any questions? <laughs> so here, okay, that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Believe it or not, um, I, I, I don't know. What time is it, by the way, guys? 2.36. Do I? I, I? I don't know what the Wi-Fi is. I would love to show you guys uh, how to use AI to create your own brand. This is my brand, okay? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, the guy that posts the Muppet things. I used to search the Internet looking for those key Muppet things. Now, there's one photo I did. Of um, do you guys do you guys remember Animal, like the guy that played the the, the drums? There's one photo there where he's like this, and he's hitting the triangle, and everybody that grew up in the '80s knows damn well what happens after that because he explodes and he starts destroying everything. We relate to that. Everybody relates to the Muppets. Jim Henson created something that's beautiful. Everybody relates to them. They're lovable, and the thing is, you know damn well what it is. I didn't have to say anywhere like it's a Muppet. I have to say, you know it's a Muppet. It's my brand, is that I started posting photos with my, my social media posts because I realized that photos made it go further. It's really weird. I started paying attention to the numbers. I was like, every time I post a photo, even if it's a picture of a bridge, it would go further. I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's make this funny. And I was like, all right. So I started getting pictures of like Cookie Monster making a mess and stuff. And just after a while, everybody's like, yeah, you're the dude that posted the Muppets things. And then I, it was because of the Charleston situation that I started doing AI. It's because somebody, uh, somebody, yeah, there you go, posted a photo of uh, an ultrasound on a beach with the Charleston Bridge in the background. I said, what the hell? I deleted my entire speech. I deleted my entire speech. I would stay up till 1.30 because of you. Because... It opened my eyes. I learned from other people, and, and when somebody shows me something, I see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture was, holy cow, I can create my own artwork using my brand. And, and the crazy thing is, I can make this black and white. I can make it a cartoon. I can do Muppet cartoon image. I can show you all that if I have Wi-Fi. I, I don't know if I, I have Wi-Fi. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and I'm not saying everybody should post everything. That's, Jesus, no. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to educate you guys because this opened my eyes to how you, you can create simple posts every single day about your brand, whatever it is, you can start today making it using AI. It takes 30 seconds. Now, this, this program that I choose to use is OpenAI, uh, which is ChatGPT. And if you get the premium package, it's like $20 a month. Chump change, really? I mean, maybe not to some people, but the thing is, is when I realize what I can do with $20 a month, I, I, I mean, I waste that at Starbucks and stuff, right? I'll just cut out Starbucks or whatever, not that I go there anyway. But, so, the cool thing about ChatGPT is, okay, let's do um, 1920 by, I, I, I could, Let's see, 1920 by, so first I tell it the resolution. So I could say 1080p image. Okay, so uh, give me a scenario. Uh, our, uh, we don't have to do Muppets. We can do anything non-Muppet. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger riding a bicycle in Paris. Why did you say Schwarzenegger? Nobody knows, not a single one of you know how to spell that name. Don't even, don't even start with me. Hold on. AI is going to crash you start doing that. Because everybody knows Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't have a beer belly. It's not even conceivable. It's not, it's not even part of the algorithm. So it, it takes about 30 seconds, and it creates an image. And then the real magic happens. Because if you don't like that image, you can alter anything about it. Anything. Like if I don't like the type of bicycle he's riding. And here's the best thing. I have rights to that image. I can download it. I can upload it right now uh, to my social media. It's perfectly fine. 
Uh, okay. So, so, Muppets is mine. You're, you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm Muppets. Don't you steal my stuff, man. So <laughs> Jim Henson Incorporated had a problem using Muppets. Ah, here's the thing. Did any of those Muppets look like Muppets that you're familiar with? No. They, Crazy, they, huh? Like Crazy, huh? Oscar so OpenAI does actually, see how it does it? It gets past Arnold Schwarzenegger because it says a muscular man. Now, it heard you when you said... Muppets or Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it rephrases it so it's not binding, and it says uh, must, resembling Arnold Schwarzenegger. See, AI rewrites what you want because it kind of gets a, an idea. So uh, let's let's change something about this image. Let's do this. So up up at the top, there was a little like, hey, what's this thing? Um, there's a little edit thing. And I highlighted an area I want to change, and then come over here, because ChatGPT is a conversation. If there's anything you don't like, although I just don't like those chairs, I don't want it to change these chairs. I want to change those ones. OK, I'm going to put seated in the chairs are clowns. Let's see if it figures out, because sometimes it does not figure it out. I could have. Because I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But believe it or not, when I started this speech, I had no idea what I was going to say. That's, I think those are the best speeches is when, when you post an image, especially AI, because the more you stare at it, you're like, wow, that's so weird. Like, this dude's got two arms. You know? So I, I, I was going to do a very funny bit in the middle of this because I, f oh, OK, well, oh, no, they're clown balloons. Oh, no, <laughs> it's the long balloons. So anyway, um, I fought AI in order to make this speech because there was one scene I wanted to do uh, macro versus um, uh, micro and it was a small family sitting on a couch versus uh, business people at, at a meeting and the first image it generated was the father, the mother, and two children and then his other hand is on another woman <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> and, and then like I was like, well, that's not going to fly. <laughs> and I was like, OK. And I said, um, let, let's ch I asked it to regenerate. And then it showed like all these kids running around. And I was thinking, well, those people don't have hobbies. <laughs> I was like, so I fought it for like a while. And then I finally ended up with this perfect image. It was a father and mother on a couch next to a little girl. And next to the little girl was this lady in a suit. And I was like, oh, shit, it's social services. So I was like, AI just wouldn't let me have it, man. So um, I eventually uh, cut out the picture of the two Muppets handshaking, and I posted it. I was like, that's simple as it gets. I didn't have to fight social services or anything, you know? But yeah, AI is just an insane. Imagine like, doing an entire speech using nothing but AI art, because the more you stare at it, the more you're like, holy cow, that's weird. And, and that's the crazy thing. It takes me seconds to generate that. I could search for a half hour trying to find a picture relevant to what I want to talk about, or I just generate one, you know? And the crazy thing is, when you're establishing your brand, this is a semi-photorealistic image. You can say, I want it to be a cartoon. Um, you can say, I want this picture in black and white. I want it to be Art Deco. I want it to be in the style of uh, Dali, uh, Salvador Dali. Uh, you can actually tell it what style you want the image to be in. Um, a, a particular cartoonist that you like, like Garfield, um, something like that, Charlie Brown. I, wanted to, uh, I want these characters to look like uh, characters from Charlie Brown. <laughs> it gets crazier. It gets crazier, folks. $20 a month, you think this isn't worth it? <laughs> That's right, folks. Do you, so think about this. There's no Muppets here. Imagine you started posting funny photos every Monday morning laughs or something like that, right? Every single Monday morning, you make the craziest image you can. That's your brand. You're the guy that posts the funny on Mondays, you know? Think about it. Now people are buying into you because that dude's hilarious. You did nothing. You typed in some stuff, and it created some crazy stuff. Think about it. It's about creating a brand that makes people want to relate to you, and it's, it's about interfacing with people on a small scale and then eventually on the grand scale. And that's how you open so many opportunities.